If you know the history of the Middle East and become familiar with it, you know the actual historical facts of this region. You will understand how the concept of the Palestine state is the myth and deception as the purpose through a lie to get Israel look like the guilty one in the conflict in the Middle East. The majority of the Western media has erred due to the disappointment of seeing the incidents in the Middle East in a false light. Things are actually quite different from what the mainstream media is telling people about what's going on in the Middle East. The resettlement of the Jews to their ancient and historical homeland in Israel turns on the mythical operation called the concept of the Palestinian state. This mythic concept of the state of Palestine came to the knowledge of the world out of nowhere. Historically, there has been no Palestinian state, the Palestinian culture being different from other Arab cultures or having similar impacts to other Arab cultures. Historically, no Palestinian leadership has reigned over the Palestinian people. So you can ask yourself why there's so much talk and discussion about the Palestinian state and the Palestinians? My goal is not to attack Muslim or Arab people. There are many peaceful Muslims and Arab people all over the world. The aim of my writing is to bring the true truth of Palestine and to which the land areas of Palestine legally belong. Not all Muslims and Arabs are terrorists and do not want war, but Islam is a warlike religion and political establishment, which try to gain world domination. For this reason, in the Middle East, there are always problems and turmoil and wars. History shows us the truth concerning the Palestinians and Palestine. The family of the Arab-American Joseph Farah is native to Syria and Lebanon. Joseph Farah said that the state of Palestine and Palestinian identity were suddenly invented when Israel won the Six-Day War in 1967. Joseph Farah also said that Arabs own 99% of the land in the Middle East and Israel owns only 1%, but Arabs think that this 1% is too much. The Arabs want to own 100% of the land in the Middle East. The question is this, the Arabs have declared war on Israel or terrorist Muslims have carried out terrorist attacks against Israel. Israel has also made mistakes and made mistakes, but the true problem in the Middle East is a Muslim terrorist. These terrorists have said their aim is to destroy Israel and the Jewish people. Zuhair Musin, former and deceased military commander of the PLO and member of the PLO Executive Council, said, there are no differences between Jordanians, Palestinians, Syrians and Lebanese. We are all part of one nation. It is only for political reasons that we carefully underline our Palestinian identity. Yes, the existence of a separate Palestinian identity serves only tactical purposes. The founding of a Palestinian state is a new tool in the continuing battle against Israel. The statement by Joseph Farah and Zuhair Musin will give us the answers, why we are now talking about Palestine. In other words, the Arabs are using the concept of the state of Palestine in an effort to destroy the nation of Israel. The blinded Western media have forgotten the tactical purpose of the Arabs and for this reason Western media the blind Western media have forgotten the tactical aim of the Arabs and for this reason the Western media believe in the propaganda and the agenda of Palestine. According to this propaganda, Israel is the big bad boy and the Palestinians are victims who have suffered iniquities, even if the reality is the opposite. Joseph Farah has said that the truth is that Palestine is no more real than Never Never Land Peter Pan's fantasy world. Farah hit the core of this matter, when we research this matter in the light of the history. The derivative on the word Palestine appeared for the first time in history when the Greek historian of antiquity Herodotus called the regions of Tel Aviv, Jaffa and Gaza by the name Palestine, which Philistines conquered in 12th century. 
and the Philistines had dominion over Ashkelon, and Ashdod, and Ekron, and Gath. We have heard over and over again that the Philistines are Arabs, Palestinian Arabs, and thus Israel Palestine historically belongs to the Palestinian Arabs. The Philistines were a nation of the Aegean Sea, which had probably come from the regions of Greece, many scholars say of Crete, into the Middle East. The original Philistine word Palistim means immigrant, which tells us that the Philistines were not originally from this region. They were conquerors who had come from Greece or Crete to the Middle East. The Philistines have no linguistic or historical ethnic ties to the Arabs. History proves that the Philistines were not Arabs, and it annuls the claim that the Arabs were descendants of the Philistines. The Romans committed the Jewish genocide in 70 AD in the land of the Jews in the ancient Israel. When the Romans committed the Jewish genocide, they said there was no Israel anymore. The Romans said that the land be called Palestine. Despite the declaration of the Romans in history, there was never any state of Palestine and Palestinian administration before 1988. Before the year 70 AD when the Temple and the city of Jerusalem were destroyed, there was not the Palestinian state in the Middle East. In the Middle East, there was no state of Palestine before 1948, when the Jews regained their ancient and historic land. In the Middle East before the State of Israel, there was no state of Palestine, no Palestinian currency, no clear borders of an independent Palestine, not the leadership of the independent state of Palestine. After the year 70 AD the land of Israel was under the reign of the Byzantines, the Arabs, the Seljuks, the Crusaders, the Mamluks, the Turkish Ottomans and the British Mandate. In 1948, the Jews got back their ancient and historical homeland. When the Arabs were defeated by Israel in the Six-Day War 1967, so the Arabs began to put the emphasis on the concept of the Palestinian and Palestinian Arab state. In the history Arabs rejected the concept of the Palestine the King of Jordan Abdallah thought that the Arabs and Jordanians who lived in Palestine were one nation and in 1950 he banned the use of the word Palestine in official documents. Abdullah's attitude towards Palestine reveals to us that among many Arabs, they were not willing to establish the Palestinian state before 1967. Arab historian Abd al-Ghani has said that, before the Balfour Promise, when the Ottoman rule 1517 to 1917 ended, Palestine's political borders as we know them today did not exist, and there was nothing called a Palestinian people with a political identity as we know today. Al-Ghani has also said that, since Palestine's lines of administrative division stretched from east to west and included Jordan and southern Lebanon, and like all peoples of the region the Palestinians were liberated from the Turkish rule and immediately moved to colonial rule, without forming a Palestinian people's political identity. In 1917, says this Arab historian on official PA TV, there was no such thing as a Palestinian people. This statement amounts to saying that the whole narrative of an indigenous Palestinian people was made up at a later point in time. Al Ghani's statements mean that the political identity of the Palestinian people was made later, at a time when the Jews regained their ancient and historic land. The political identity of the Palestinians was developed for the reason that the Arabs might have the weapon to strike against Israel, whose purpose is to destroy the Jewish nation. Former Syrian leader and politician Ani Bey Abdul Hadi has said in 1937, there is no such country as Palestine. Palestine is a term the Zionists invented. There is no Palestine in the Bible. Our country was for centuries part of Syria. Palestine is alien to us. It is the Zionists who introduced it. 
The remarkable statement by the Syrian politician in 1937 reveals that from the very beginning there was no concept of the Palestinian state among the Arabs. History proves this, so that the word Palestine used by the Romans was not an independent state in Middle East history until 1988. The Romans conquered the land of Israel in 70 AD and after this the people began to call the region of ancient Israel by the name of Palestine. After year 70 AD the land area that was Palestine was under the rule of many governments, but not like the independent state of Palestine. On November 15, 1988, the Palestinian National Council, the legislative body of the Palestine Liberation Organization PLO, met in Algeria to adopt a declaration of independence of the state of Palestine. The Declaration of the Palestinian State in 1988, was written by the famous Palestinian poet Mahmoud Darwish and read by the Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat. It proclaimed an independent state of Palestine on the Palestinian soil with Jerusalem as its capital. A month after Egypt, Jordan and many other nations recognized the state of Palestine. The Israeli army won the war in 1967, and when the Arabs lost the war against Israel, the Arabs began to speak about Palestinian identity and the state of Palestine. The terrorist organization PLO declared the independence of the Palestinian state in 1988. The Arabs developed and created the Palestinian question for the reason that they might put into practice their purpose, that they attempt to cause the total destruction of Israel and the Jewish people. It is very important to understand that in the year 70 AD when the Romans conquered the land of Israel, after that they renamed the lands of Israel as the Palestine, 70 AD was not born the state of Palestine, but the Romans called the land areas by the name Palestine. Historical evidence about the connection of the Jews in the Palestine history proves that the Jewish people also used the name Palestine. In 1932, the Jew Gershon Agron founded the newspaper The Palestine Post. In 1950, it changed its name The Jerusalem Post. The Palestine Symphony Orchestra was founded in 1936 under the leadership of Bronislaw Huberman, who was a Jew. In 1948, the orchestra changed its name to the Israel Philharmonic Orchestra. The Palestine Electric Company founded in 1923 by Pinhas Rudenberg, who was a Jew. After the independence of Israel it changed its name to the Israel Electric Corporation. The aforementioned examples concerning the Jewish ownership of the newspaper, the orchestra and the electrical company prove this to us that the name and the word Palestine were usually used for all people who lived in this area. It also proves to us that it was a land that was called Palestine, not a particular Palestinian people or a state, but the land area, where Jews and Arabs lived. The truth about the occupier nowadays, many people say that Israel is an occupier who illegally occupies Gaza and the West Bank. When we study and research this thing more deeply than just a scratch on the surface, so we see that this thing about the lands of Israel is completely different from what this thing has brought to the people. According to the Balfour Declaration in 1917, the Jews have regained their historic homeland with their lands, which also belong to Gaza and the West Bank. San Remo Conference the 24th of April 1920 the nations of the world accepted the Balfour Declaration and the boundaries of the mandate areas in 1917 the Great Britain who administered the Palestinian lands published the Balfour Declaration on the foundation of the national home of the Jews in Palestine in 1922 Great Britain granted Transjordan almost 80 percent of Palestine's land on behalf of the British Mandate Authority, Jordan covered the majority of Palestine. The Arabs refused to accept the statement of Balfour.
Between 1936 and 1939, the Arabs revolted in the Palestinian territories, after which the British regime proposed the creation of Jewish and Arab states. The proposal was to create a small Jewish state in Galilee and a strip of sea land as well as a British enclave from Jerusalem to Jaffa. The Jewish state would have won less than one-fifth of the territory and the rest of the territories of Palestine would have stayed with the Arabs. The Arabs expressed opposition to the proposal. In 1947, the UN established the UN Special Committee on Palestine the Commission to resolve the Palestinian question. The proposal was made to divide Palestine into two different states, one for the Arabs and one for the Jews. The area of Jerusalem Bethlehem would remain under international control and other lands would be divided between Arabs and Jews into their own countries. The proposal was partially accepted by the Jews, but rejected by Arab leaders. After the UN proposal, a war broke out between the Arabs and the Jews. First the Arabs seem to win, and then the war turns in favor of the Jews. When the British left the country on May 14, 1948, Israel declared itself as the independent state. The next day, U.S. President Harry Truman recognized Israel as an independent state. A day after Israel declared independence, Egypt, Syria, Jordan, Lebanon and Iraq attacked Israel. Israel survived the war. After the war, Israel controlled the entire Palestine, except the Gaza Strip and the West Bank. The Arabs failed to destroy Israel, but Jordan took over the West Bank and East Jerusalem. Egypt took Gaza under its rule and Syria occupied the Golan Heights. Jordan, Egypt and Syria illegally occupied and possessed areas that inherit in accordance with international treaties with Israel. In 1967, during the Six-Day War, when the Arabs attacked Israel, Israel took control of Gaza, Golan Heights and East Jerusalem, which belonged to Jews in ancient history, and international treaties accepted it. Israel did not retake Gaza, East Jerusalem, the West Bank and the Golan Heights from the state of Palestine, but Israel retaken these regions from Jordan, Egypt and Syria. We should know and understand that, because more and more people are repeating this false claim that Israel has occupied the Palestinian state and their lands. In history the state of Palestine did not exist until 1988, when a terrorist organization PLO declared the birth of the Palestinian state. The motivation of the Arab nations and the purpose of starting the Six-Day War was not to establish the state of Palestine, but to attempt to destroy Israel and the Jewish nation. This historical fact puts the charges against Israel as an occupier in a new light for those who are not aware of this historical fact. In the light of historical truth Jordan, Egypt and Syria were illegal occupiers and the consequences of the war, Israel took back the areas that belonged to Israel. When Jordan occupied the West Bank and East Jerusalem, Jordan rejected commitments and treaties. And for this reason Jordanians prevented Jews from accessing holy places, cultural objects and Jewish cemeteries. The Jews were prevented from entering the Old City and the Western Wall. The Arabs destroyed quarters of the Old City, Jewish synagogues were destroyed and violated, and thousand tombstones were destroyed in the Jewish cemetery. Jordanians surrounded by barbed wire areas that they have occupied, with concrete obstacles and barriers and walls. Quite often, Jordanian soldiers were shooting at the Jews in areas belonging to the Jews. Many international communities consider that Jordan's acts in the West Bank are illegal. When Syria occupied the Golan Heights, it used the area for the military purpose of shooting at Israeli civilians. For this reason Israeli children were forced to sleep in the bomb shelter near the Golan Heights. 
In the light of history, it is very clear that the goal of the Middle East Arabs was to destroy the Jewish people and Israel. In history, evidence about Israel as a occupier appears totally in the new light. In fact, the Arabs occupied the regions of Israel and after the war that the Arabs began, Israel took back its own historical lands and ancient regions. The blind media and the majority of the public have made Israel the occupant and the big bad boy, though the truth is opposed. When the Arabs occupied the West Bank, East Jerusalem, Gaza and the Golan Heights between the years 1948 to 1967, so the purpose of the occupation was to cause death and destruction to the Jewish people as much as possible. Today, the Arabs are acting in the same way, because they are continually trying to commit deadly terrorist attacks in the midst of the Jewish people. If it were a sincere intention to establish the Palestinian Arab state in the Middle East, the Arabs would not always try to destroy Israel, but they would devote all their time and money to improving living conditions for Palestinian Arabs and peacefully trying to build the Palestinian state. The violent terrorism Arab terrorists' continual violent acts of terror and spread death within the land of Israel, the history of the Arabs in the Palestinian region brings the actions of Israel in a new light. Israel protects its own citizens in its own land areas and if the Israelites would yield to this terrorism and acts of war, so Israel would agree to kill its own people. The Arab terrorists want to destroy Israel. No state or nation wants to deal with genocide and so Israel is constantly in a very difficult situation. When Israel stands up against violent terrorists, whose ultimate aim is to destroy Israel. The blinded media and the majority of the people will not make it easier for Israel, because the blindness of distorted hearts, corrupt and distort incidents of the Middle East by making furious attackers as innocent and Israel as guilty, which try to defend its land and nation against deceitful attacks. Israel has not always been able to do things properly in the most extreme situations and conflicts and has made mistakes, but despite this, all the time Israel has tried to protect its nation and do as little damage as possible to Palestinian civilians. Arab terrorists attempt by all means to kill as many Jews as possible, including civilians. Not all Arabs are terrorists in the Middle East, but near the history of the Middle East proves that Arab terrorism is the main reason for the conflicts in this area. The Arab terrorist organization Hamas purposely sent Palestinian children into the midst of the conflict as human shields. Their goal is to try, behind the shelter of these human children shields, to protect Hamas to destroy Israel and the Jewish nation. Hamas knows that Israel will protect and defend its own citizens in a situation of chaos and disorder and that innocent civilians and children will die, and the goal is to obtain worldwide sympathy for the Palestinians against Israel. Could there be an evil plan that would send its own children to certain death and accuse Israel for it, which defends its own nation against terrorism? I do not support the war and killing. I have one question to ask you. You should think about it and look at it honestly. When Hamas attempts to cause lethal destruction to the Israelites through human children shields, so should Israel because of this human shield give up and let terrorists destroy the nation of Israel? If you are honest, then you have the right answer to my question. Terrorist Muslims try by all means to destroy Israel and demand Israel's land for themselves. The Quran declares that Allah has given the land of Israel to the Jews, which is their promised land. Quran Surah 10-90. We took the children of Israel across the sea, Pharaoh and his hosts followed them in insolence and spite. At length, when overwhelmed with the flood, he said, I believe that there is no God except him whom the children of Israel believe in. I am of those who submit to God in Islam. 91. It was said to him, Ah now, but a little while before, wast thou in rebellion? 
and thou didst mischief and violence. 92. This day shall we save thee in thy body, that thou mayest be a sign to those who come after thee. But verily, many among mankind are heedless of our signs. 93. We settled the children of Israel in a beautiful dwelling place, and provided for them sustenance of the best, it was after knowledge had been granted to them, that they fell into schisms. Verily God will judge between them as to the schisms amongst them, on the day of judgment. Translation by A. Yusuf Ali Quran Surah 520. Remember Moses said to his people, O oh my people! Call in remembrance the favor of God unto you when he produced prophets among you made you kings and gave you what he had not given to any other among the peoples. 21. O my people, enter the holy land which God hath assigned unto you and turn not back ignominiously for then will ye be overthrown to your own ruin. 22. They, said, O Moses, in this land are a people of exceeding strength, never shall we enter it until they leave it, if once they leave then shall we enter. 23. But, among, their God-fearing men were two on whom God had bestowed his grace, they said, Assault them at the proper gate, when once ye are in victory will be yours. But on God put your trust if ye have faith. Translation by A. Yusuf Ali The Holy Muslim Book, says that the land of Israel was given to the Jews, Israel. Today, nearly 90% of Palestinians are Muslim. The great irony is that in the Holy Book of Muslims in the Quran, Allah says that he gave the land of Israel to the Jews, Israelites. Muslims in Palestine and throughout the Middle East have acted contrary to the teachings of the Quran when they are demanding the land of Israel for themselves. If Arab Muslims followed the teachings of the Quran, they would leave the land of Israel and allow the Jews, Israelites, to live peacefully in their own land. So there is a solution to the Middle East problem, but Arab Muslims do not want to give the land of Israel to the Jews Israelis, to whom it belongs. The Muslims say that Palestine is theirs and that Jerusalem is a holy place for them. However, the words Palestine and Jerusalem are not mentioned in the Quran. According to the true revelation of the Quran, the terms Palestine or Jerusalem do not have any meaning for Muslims because the Quran says nothing about them. Muslims use Palestine and Jerusalem as a weapon of attack against Israel for their intent to destroy Israel and the Jewish nation. God of the Bible gave the land to Israelites, we find this in the Bible, Genesis chapter 15 verse 18 In the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your seed have I given this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates, and the other quote from the Bible says, Exodus chapter 23 verse 31 And I will set your bounds from the Red Sea even to the Sea of the Philistines, and from the desert to the river for I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand, and you shall drive them out before you. 32 You shall make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. 33 They shall not dwell in your land, lest they make you sin against me, for if you serve their gods, it will surely be a snare to you. The God of the Bible gave the Israelites a land which also included the so-called Philistine territory. The biblical evidence of the land of Israel is found in ancient history, where the tribe of Israel and the tribe of Judah reigned over the lands that God gave them. False statements about stealing Palestinian land I hear very often such a claim that Israel has stolen Palestinian lands. Such a statement is full of lies. Prior to 1948, Jews bought land from the Arabs in the region called Palestine. It is worth noting that the Arabs voluntarily sold land to the Jews, and the land was not suitable for human habitation. The lands bought by the Jews were swamped areas, wastelands and deserts. For example in 1944 in the Palestine, 
region the Jews paid the Arabs $1,000 to $1,100 an acre for the areas of land, which were unfit for human habitation. If we make a comparison, then in the U.S. Iowa of good and rich land was paid only $110 an acre. The accusations of the Arabs or others that the Jews stole the Arabs' land in the Palestine area are completely false. Based on historical evidence, the Arabs have benefited greatly from land trade by taking excessive prices from worthless land and the Jews made these worthless lands flourish. Based on all the historical information, we see how the concept of the Palestinian state is the creation of the Arabs in the Middle East. The goal of Arab Muslim terrorists is to steal the land of the Jews and carry out the final and complete destruction of Israel. Not all Arabs are involved in fraudulent or violent terrorist acts against Israel, but many of them are and this is proven by the many and repeated acts of terrorism that behind them are Palestinian Arabs, as well as other Arabs. It is not my intention to discriminate or attack the Arabs or to discredit the Arabs, but to bring out the historical truth of the conflict in the Middle East, which is generally distorted due to bad and twisted information. During the Middle East conflict, Israelis were not always successful in doing the right thing, but they make every effort to do that which is right in the land of Israel and the rights of the Jewish people to live in their own historic and antique homeland, which is their land. The total area of the Middle East is about 9 million square kilometers and the area of Israel is about 20,770 square kilometers. The land of Israel is a small point in the Middle East, but in spite of this, the Arabs want the entire Middle East to themselves. It is no longer a matter of human greed, but of insatiable anger, whose only aim is to destroy Israel. How do you position yourself on historical facts? Does the evidence change your mind about what's going on in the Middle East, or do you believe, despite everything, in the deception about the Middle East and the myth of a Palestinian state? Do you support the declaration of independence of a terrorist organization in relation to the Palestinian state? The creation of the deception of the Palestinian state in the Middle East will be the cause of a major war in the Middle East in the future. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 17 He that speaks truth shows forth righteousness, but a false witness deceit. 18 There is that speaks like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. 19 The lip of truth shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. 20 Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil, but to the counselors of peace is joy.